Hi, this is Justin Clady of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for joining me for this week's episode of the Sonic Scoop podcast. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about compression and limiting, specifically the ratio controls on a compressor or a limiter. Actually, a ratio control is what separates a compressor from a limiter. We'll talk about that, but I want to give you some understanding about how to think about using your ratio control. When should you use a high ratio? When should you use a low ratio? I've done some pretty popular videos in the past, particularly on attack and release, which I think is one of those things that's one of the last things for people to figure out in a compressor and how to really use attack and release settings. And those ones have been really popular, even though they're just me talking about attack and release. Yes, I also have demonstration videos where you can see me and hear me playing around with attack and release. But before even getting into that, I think you've got to get the concept down. And the best way to really hear this stuff and play around with it is on your own. That's why I always love to start with one of these conceptual talky videos on it. If there's enough demand for it, I'll try to find a day to do a demonstration video on it too, where you can hear the stuff along with me. But again, I think the biggest thing for you to do is to take the ideas we're going to discuss in brief today and apply them as soon as you're done with this episode, as soon as you can afterwards, and hear the differences for yourself in your own work. And that's where you're really going to make the mind your connection on this stuff. All right, let's get right into it. High ratio versus low ratio. Before we do, the briefest of shout outs to our sponsors. I would love it if you do something for me, which is to sponsor this podcast. How do you do that? All you got to do is tap that little like button if you're on the YouTube version, or if you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or one of those, consider leaving, leaving us a rating and review, hopefully a five-star one, whatever you think we deserve. And make sure you're subscribed, notifications bell, all that good stuff so you don't miss more videos. Big shout out and thanks to Sound Toys, makes them my favorite creative effects in the known universe. Try out anything they make for free for 30 days at soundtoys.com. And also big thanks to Focusrite, who have made the lovely Claret interface that I'm speaking into right now. Make killer bang for the buck stuff. Great place to look for interfaces if you're in the market. All right, let's move on. How and when should you use a high ratio versus a low ratio? First of all, what is a ratio control? We'll get that out of the way, and then I'll give you the hows, whens, and whys. What is a ratio control? A ratio control basically tells you how much your compressor should be compressing, or the ratio control tells your compressor how much it should be compressing. Does that make even more sense? So you've got something called the threshold control on a compressor. And whenever the signal crosses the threshold, goes higher than the threshold, the compressor says, ah, no, 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 you're going to come down. You're too loud. But by how much? Well, the most extreme possibility would be infinite. Meaning, here's a threshold, you shall not pass! This is some, is that Gandalf the Grey or Gandalf the White? I don't know, I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings guy. You tell me, but you shall not pass. That is brick wall limiter. Here's our threshold. You are not going a single dB, not even a 0.1 dB past this spot. That's the loudest you're going to get. Brick wall limiter, infinity, highest possible ratio. A low ratio, say two to one, that's a pretty low ratio. You can have a lower ratio than two to one, 1 1.8 to one, 1 1.5 to one, but low ratio, two to one, basically says, oh, this signal, it's trying to go 4 dB higher than the threshold. Well, I'm only going to allow it to go 2 dB higher than the threshold. How do you like them apples? Oh, oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. Were you trying to go 10 dB above the threshold? No, I'm sorry. 5 dB above the threshold. 2 to 1 ratio. The signal wanted to get a certain amount above the threshold, but we're not going to let it go quite that high to, in a 2 to 1 ratio. If it was a five to one ratio. That would mean, hey, oh, you want to get 10 dB above the threshold? I'm sorry, you can only go two dB above the thre threshold. For every five dB you want to go above the threshold, we're only going to let you go up one dB. So that's how the ratio works on your compressor. So now's the question. How, when, why would you want to use a low ratio versus a high ratio? People will often say that a lower ratio on your compressor will be more transparent. And that's true, except for when it isn't. There are actually cases in which a relatively high ratio can be more transparent. Generally speaking, the lower you're going to set your threshold, the lower you're going to want to set your ratio. Your signal may be averaging, say, around 
negative 14. Let's throw out a number some people know. Negative 14 on the meter is where your signal is averaging. If you're setting your threshold close to negative 14, where it's affecting a lot of the signal and it's affecting it very often, it might be a good idea to use a lower ratio. So you're having the compressor kick in relatively often, but when it does, you're not compressing a lot. And that can be one way to be transparent. If your compressor was kicking in a lot and you had a relatively low threshold compared to your audio signal, and it was making the compressor trigger a lot, but your ratio was six to one or eight to one, that might sound more aggressive, more compressed. So if you have the same threshold setting, all else being equal, a higher ratio is going to sound a bit more aggressive and a bit more compressed. Sometimes that's desirable. Sometimes you want that thing to sound super squashed. If you want to check out some awesome sounding super squash, you can check out a video I did actually on the B&H channel where I did a demo for them on parallel compression, where I showed you the old trick of, particularly in rock or pop or genres where there's acoustic drum kit, totally smashing the bejesus out of the drums with a high ratio compressor where you're doing a ton of compression. You could be doing 6, 8, 10 dB of compression and then EQing the heck out of the sucker and then folding that kind of machine drums like on steroid sounding drums underneath your main drums. Popular approach when you're dealing with acoustic drums and you want to give them some muscle and you want to give them some power without making them sound too unnatural. Taking unnatural drums, folding them in, parallel compression. And for that kind of thing where you want super compressed drums or anything, higher ratio makes a lot of sense. However, there are times where a higher ratio can actually sound pretty transparent and can be pretty desirable. I will generally use a higher ratio when I want to control something some of the time. There are two examples of this that I'm going to give to you right now. One example is if I'm trying to control the transients on something. And sometimes in mastering, I'll get tracks that were not compressed or limited very much by the mix engineer. And there may be issues, particularly on drums with transients poking out a little bit too much and being a little too inconsistent. Not an uncommon issue to deal with in mastering. So if I want to smooth out those transients, I'm likely to use a higher ratio compressor that kicks in less often, but when it does kick in, it offers a lot of control. If you are to set that ratio so high that it's not just 5 to 1 or 6 to 1 or 8 to 1, but all of a sudden you get to 10 to 1, that's like the official designation of the thing has turned not from a compressor to now a limiter. So if you want to know the difference between a compressor and a limiter, a limiter is basically a compressor with a ratio of 10 to 1 or higher. And usually we associate the attack speed and the release speed of a limiter with being very, very fast. Because usually the idea of a limiter is to limit peaks. So if you have very erratic transient peaks that either sound too dynamic, so they sound sloppy, or too thin and attacky, so they sound annoying, using a relatively higher ratio can be helpful to limit some of those peaks. So generally speaking, the higher that you're going to place through your threshold, because you don't want the compressor acting on your signal all the time, you only want it catching peaks, then generally the higher you're also going to set your ratio. So then when it does kick in and clamp down a peak, it really clamps down and really contains that peak. Because peaks can be way big compared to the average level. Your average level of negative 14, I mean, you could have peaks at negative two, you know, they could be 12 dB or more louder than the average. And the idea behind a limiter or a high ratio compressor is to really catch those peaks and control them. So that's one place that I might use a higher ratio compressor. Very common in mastering, if I'm going to use two separate compressors, I might have one with a relatively low threshold and a relatively low ratio that's there to kind of just contain things and keep them a little smoother and keep the dynamics from getting out of hand. Maybe it's adding a little bit of color or it's working on the envelope of the sound a little bit by letting a little more attack through or smoothing out the attack a little bit. But 
in some cases, I'll also need a really fast attack compressor to first kind of shave off some of those transients. So we'll have a high ratio and a high threshold to make sure we're containing some of those initial impacts. And then it's going then through a lower ratio, lower threshold compressor that's a little bit more gentle and maybe a little bit more of a character kind of thing. So it's one place to use them. Serial compression, a little bit of both. In some contexts, you might need to just use the one, shaving off some transients with a high ratio compressor. But another good place for the higher ratio compressors, in my opinion, where I find myself using them more often, are going to be bass instruments. Bass guitar, particularly, like live played bass. Maybe sometimes a live played kick drum that was played maybe a little bit more haphazardly than it could have been. Dynamics weren't as tight as they could have been. So maybe I would be using, say, a relatively high ratio on a multi-band compressor to really contain either that bass or that kick that's a little erratic and all over the place to give it some consistency. And the rest of the stuff might have a lower ratio compressor. So that's the other big place. When where you might go high ratio, where things are out of control because they can vary so much from note to note on a kick or a bass instrument, often when you want to add extra control, I find that those elements, particularly bass, either warrant or can stand a higher ratio compressor with a higher threshold. So that when certain bass notes or certain kick hits get a little bit too loud, we stop them in their tracks and make sure that they don't get too loud. And the rest of the time on other bass or kick hits, they're not really kicking in that much or that significantly. So long story short, a good rule of thumb here is whenever you're using a lower threshold so that your compressor kicks in more often, you probably want to have a lower ratio. So it's a little bit more transparent. On the other hand, when you're setting a higher threshold, where your compressor isn't kicking in as often, when it does kick in, you probably want it to really kick in for real. And that's probably when you want a higher ratio rather than a lower one. Of course, there's plenty of crossover and exceptions here. You might do exactly the opposite of why I recommend it, but that's a good rule of thumb to get you started on thinking about how to use this stuff. And rules are meant to be broken. So when you feel like these rules should be broken, please go ahead and do so. You can do exactly the opposite of what I've just said. It's a rule of thumb, not a real rule, but I hope it gives you some guidance and a good way to think about how to use that control in your work. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you've liked this one, you want some more free stuff from me, you can check out the five habits of truly great mixers, a workshop I've done. I think it's like 40 minutes long, totally for free that ties together all the common threads in the work of the very best mixers that I've studied from around the world. More than a decade now, I've been interviewing great mixers, producers, and engineers to try to find the common threads in their approaches. And my ultimate thing I've done with that is my full-length course, Mixing Breakthroughs. But the five habits of truly great mixers ties together five of the most common habits I've seen across all of their work. Pretty much every single great mixer does all five of these things in every one of their mixes. And I don't think I can think of a single one who does less than four of them. So you definitely want to check that out. You can get that sonicscoop.com slash mixhabits. That's sonicscoop.com slash mixhabits. Definitely check that out there. If you want something that's more mastering-minded, you can check out my free Mastering 101 workshop over at sonicscoop.com slash mastering101. That's sonicscoop.com slash mastering101. Big shout and thanks to you for hanging out with me for this episode. Remember to hit like, subscribe, comment down below. Do you have a different way of thinking through how to use compression and ratio? If you do, I want to hear about it. If you like this one, always like to hear that too. If you've got questions that you want answered in the podcast, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. If you prefer to email me, you can. You can hit me with an email at podcast at sonicscoop.com. I read every one of those as well as every one of the comments and I respond when I can, sometimes in long podcast form. A big shout and thanks to Sound Toys making some of my favorite creative effects in the known universe. Try out anything they make for free for 30 days over at soundtoys.com. Also, big shout and thanks to Focusrite making the lovely Claret interface I'm speaking into right now. Make killer bang for the buck stuff and some lovely super high-end stuff as well. Check them out at focusrite.com. Thanks for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.